Hello? Oh, hey. How's it going, babe? No, it's funny. I was just about to call you, actually. Um, did you order anything from Amazon, or are you expecting a package of some kind? Um, uh... No particular reason. Yeah, I love you too. Bye. No, cat. This, uh, this probably isn't a really smart decision. This could be filled with anthrax or something, for all I know. Ah, <sighs> but you know what they say. Curiosity killed the cat, right? Dear Will and his channel, I was peering through some of your content and came under the impression that you might be a fan of accursed objects. You are now in possession of something known as Schrodinger's Stash, an heirloom of the late Erwin Schrodinger. This wooden chest was found locked and sealed underneath Erwin Schrodinger's bed, along with a hand-scribbled note after his death in 1961. This chest was custom-made by a German craftsman of unknown origin. The seals are airtight, and the manufacturer was able to layer lead between the wood that makes up the general construction of the box. As such, it is completely X-ray proof. Legend has it that this chest has never been opened. Its fate has been debated as it has changed hands. There are exactly two possibilities for what the chest might contain. It may contain a priceless rare artifact from one of the greatest minds the world has ever known. The other possibility, you now own a chest filled with whatever horrible things Schrodinger could get his hands on in the 1950s. Schrodinger's stash was passed down through his next of kin before I eventually came into possession of it. Now, Will, it is yours. Inshallah. God, I guess that's why it's a little heavier than I'd expect. I guess the key makes more sense now. What is this? This must be the other letter. Let's see what we got here. You are now in possession of a paradox. This chest has an equal chance to make you the wealthiest man alive or ruin your life. This chest may contain my final notes that were deemed too radical by my peers, life-changing works that could have been the catalyst to fix all of humanity's problems. The other possibility, the chest contains a collection of the most awful material mankind can possibly get their hands on. The mere sight of this evil will scar you. Some demons cannot be put back into the chest once they enter your mind. I assure you, no matter what is inside of this chest, it will change your life. Open at your own risk. Erwin Schrodinger.
quantum mechanics, Schrodinger's cat is a thought experiment that illustrates a paradox of quantum superposition. In the thought experiment, a hypothetical cat may be considered simultaneously both alive and dead, while it is unobserved in a closed box. As a result of its fate being linked to a random event that may or may not occur. Did you give me a cat, Schrodinger? Hello? Hey, Will, what's going on? Well, not too much. Uh, you happen to see my tweets today by any chance? <laughs> yeah, of course I did. That's why I called. Concerned I got mailed a bomb or something? Well, I mean, I don't know what's in it, but from the letter you got, a bomb might be the best thing it was. Yeah, uh, I feel ya. I mean, I've been doing some research on Erwin Schrodinger and- I don't care about your research. You went to your door, saw something, picked it up, and brought it in your house. Like, do you realize you've already started your attachment to this box? What do you mean by attachment, exactly? Well, there's a box outside. Not yours. You don't know anything about it. And yet, you made the choice personally, pick the box up and bring it into your environment. Are you, are you saying you didn't know that was a choice? All right, F-Bombs, you're kind of freaking me out a little bit here. What, what exactly are you trying to get at? You now implicated this box into your life. Like, no matter what you do from this point out, you and this box have interacted. So if there's something absolutely nefarious or worse or whatever in this box, you've already decided to participate in whatever happens. Wait, but hold on, I haven't opened the chest yet. I've just opened a couple letters, opened a box. Where is it? On my kitchen table. Where was it? Outside on my doorstep. How did it get inside? I, I brought it in to my house. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You made the choice. Everything you do is interconnected. Take responsibility for the choice. That's all. Will, you ever seen Shrek? Yeah, I, I love Shrek. But wait, you're trying to tell me my box is like an onion or what's going on? I mean, of course it is. Like, you're peeling layers. Layer one, the, the decision you made upon seeing the box. Layer two, the tweet. Layer three, this conversation. And because of this, every time you get more entangled, it's harder and harder to get out. So if you would have stopped at layer one and never picked up the onion, it's over. But now you start peeling the onion, you not only have the onion left in your hand, you have all the peels laying on the ground. I've never really thought about it like that, but that's a pretty good point. Well, now that you have, what are you gonna do about it? You're traveling through another dimension, a dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind, a journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are that of imagination. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. It was November 30th, 2022, when the entire world changed. But the reality is that it had been changing for a long time. Slowly, a tool set was trained to generate and distribute humanity's creations without the need for humans. It started out as a chat bot. People would ask it funny things like, what's the meaning of life and do you have consciousness? Once the novelty wore off and people realized the full potential of what was before them, humanity began prompting it to do more complicated tasks, such as writing movie scripts, creating advertising copy, or asking advice for overthrowing the government. Soon afterwards, an application using the chatbot was created that could render images from a text prompt. 
a dog eating a watermelon, watercolor, a painting of a mall in the style of Vincent van Gogh, the horrors of war, photorealistic style. Both writing and art were things that originally had been walled behind humanity's ability to manifest their thoughts into a recognizable form. But as the AI took over, a simple text prompt could generate anything that a person could think of. The only limit became the creativity of the user to create a prompt processing power and the data set. Soon the best AI art prompts were generated from the chatbot and creativity of the user was no longer a factor. What other things could we teach the AI to do? The humans asked in unison. Soon the entire production, marketing and distribution of most creative endeavors was taken over by the AI. No one could tell the difference between what an AI made or what a human made. To fix the problem, humanity created another AI. It was originally thought that the first jobs that humanity would give up would be related to physical labor, things that were dangerous or jobs of low skill and little fulfillment. To everyone's surprise, the first thing to be relinquished to the AI was the arts. I, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to get hearts or anything. I really, I, I'm going to talk about it in five minutes. I just don't want too many crazy comments. <sighs> sorry, 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 sorry. Everyone here probably knows what's going on. Uh, I want to say, first of all, that it's true. It's a, it's a hundred percent true. Um, I looked at a deep fake, uh, porn video, um, uh, of streamers it's uh it's disgusting it's, it really is disgusting it's disgusting it's fucking it's it's wrong um i guess what i want to say is uh so i i i already feel deeply i'm deeply fucking embarrassed about this i'm, I'm deeply fucking i'm embarrassed i'm angry at myself uh i i feel fucking i just feel so fucking stupid i just want to say a couple facts I, I don't know if I should include this or not, but I have the fucking the receipt thing right here. I just stupidly left the fucking tab open, and it was at 2 a.m. on the night before when when Ari was uh, out of town. So I've done a lot on the stream to like create a pattern of behavior where I really want, especially women on Twitch, to feel safer. Like I, and then fucking at 2 a.m., you know, I've been I've been watching so much fucking I've been reading so much fucking AI stuff. I'm reading all this fucking stuff about AI and defect music, defect art and everything. And I'm in these fucking discords. And I was, it just feels so embarrassing to me. But I was on fucking Pornhub, dude. I was on a fucking regular ass normal fucking website. And there was an ad for fucking defect thing. And then I click it and I'm fucking in this fucking rabbit hole. And at 2 a.m. I fucking, I, I don't know. I got morbidly curious and I click something. And I, and I, it's just fucking, it's, it's gross. These people disgust me. They don't care if what they did was wrong. They just care if they were caught. What is going on everybody? I'm Will, and this is my channel. 
Now, it's not every day you receive a paradox by post. Schrodinger's cat in the shape of a wooden chest. It's been a journey that some of you have followed along on my Twitter, at willinus280. As soon as I got the box, I let the world know that I was in possession of it. As I tweeted my progress with the box collapsing various realities around me, I was unwittingly becoming closer and closer to a universe where the will there discovered what was inside the box. If you had been the receiver of this package, what would you have done with it? Would you have immediately called the cops upon seeing a strange package on your doorstep, or would you have brought it into your home and opened it on your kitchen table? Would you have let the people around you know that you had it, or would you keep it a secret? Does the level of privacy change your feelings about opening the box? Be honest. Hell, even if you did open the chest and saw its contents, how could I believe you? How would I know what is inside of that box with 100% certainty without having a look for myself? The answer to these questions lies in our ability to determine the perfect balance of law, freedom, and privacy. Because something scary has happened. The world is changing faster than anyone could have ever expected. The average person is getting access to increasingly dangerous technology. Pandora's box is opening. And you might be the one who opened it. You see, my adoring audience, now that I have your undivided attention, I must proclaim that I think that you are watching this video inside of your own wooden chest of sorts that has the potential to contain a range of groundbreaking work or unimaginably illegal material. There have been a lot of new developments in AI technology that are scaring me. Let's start with Stable Diffusion. It's one of the most popular standalone AI art generation programs and can be downloaded and ran from almost any computer that has been made in the last 10 years. The limit to what this program can make is only limited to processing power, creativity of text prompts, and the data sets that it's trained on. If you need something more particular, new data sets can be downloaded online. You can also train Stable Diffusion manually on your own set of images, perhaps even feeding your favorite AI-generated images back into the system to fortify the type of material you want. Algorithms already control what you eat, where you sleep, and what kind of content you are watching. But we are currently seeing an AI renaissance that will soon see an algorithm capable of the entire content production workflow, starting at creation and ending in marketing and distribution. Imagine a world where Google's Bard wrote a video script, animated it, voiced the talent, and generated a keyword-filled description using Google search data. Then it uploaded it to YouTube with an AI-generated thumbnail. Now picture that same technology creating a video to be posted on Pornhub, or even worse, the Darknet. This world that I'm describing is not too far into the future, and I'm not sure humanity has the ability to deal with this level of change. We are already at each other's throats trying to decipher what is real and fake. What will humans do when an AI can create a photorealistic animation without even prompting it? I know, I sound crazy, like tinfoil hat and take my meds crazy. But parts of this nightmare are already reality due to the rapid increase in the quality of deepfakes. Deepfakes, if you're unfamiliar, are fake videos or images that are made to look real by using advanced computer algorithms, the same ones used to train artificial intelligence and large language models like ChatGPT. Deepfakes are a growing concern because the difficulty to create a realistic deepfake is plummeting as the capability of AI skyrockets. The types of deepfakes most people are familiar with are the types in famous Hollywood films, like de-aging Robert De Niro in The Irishman, 1980s Luke Skywalker in The Mandalorian, and not to mention deceased people like Paul Walker in the Fast and Furious franchise. But now, with enough video data of someone, you can create a deepfake without the need for a multi-million dollar budget. You can do it from your gaming chair. You can do it using the video from any of your favorite online personalities. Hell. Everyone these days has a video podcast. I mean, that's your facial animation and voice cloning data right there. AI deepfakes voice cloning, it is currently at the lowest level of danger to us that it will ever be. There is an AI arms race that is going to affect more people than the atom bomb. Chatbots have already convinced a person to commit suicide, and it wasn't even programmed to do that. One day, it will be impossible to determine what is real if it is seen on a screen. You won't be able to trust the written word, spoken language, or even the video you are watching. And it feels like that day is fast approaching.
so well and done But I hardly live long inside And who's the one you're clinging to Instead of me tonight And where are you now? Now that I need you Tears on my pillow Wherever you go I cry the river And reach to your ocean You never see me fall apart In the words of a broken heart It just emotion that's taking me over Tired of being sorrow Lies in my soul But if you don't come back Come home to me, darling I know that there'll be nobody left me Moment of truth.